Hello and welcome to this new podcast, Recurrent Nevus or Recurrent Melanoma. We do see more and more often repigmentations in any scar. So therefore, we do need the history of the patient. We check the clinic as well and especially the dermoscopy. Sometimes we do have any report of histopathology of the first treatment but more and more often we do not have this report and therefore we have the challenge how do we deal with this repigmentation in any scar. This podcast is mainly based on the very good experience of a nice study of the International Dermoscopy Society and the contribution of all these here listed co-authors with data and images. So thank you for all these co-authors as well. In this podcast, I like to provide for you the basics of recurrent nevi and recurrent melanomas, the importance of history, the importance of dermoscopy, of course, and the clues to differentiate between a recurrent nevus and a recurrent melanoma. And finally, the helpful conclusion for all of us for our daily work. When we have a patient with a recurrent pigmentation in a scar, well, we ask about the kind and date of the former procedure and, if available, the report of histopathology. As well, we look to the clinic, especially we use our dermoscope. And what we have found in our study is that the date, the report of histopathology and the dermoscopy are the most important clues how to proceed in future. We can use the history to differentiate between a recurrent nevus and a recurrent melanoma. First of all, we check about the age. If the patient is younger than 30 years, then it's more likelihood a recurrent nevus than a melanoma. Please consider there are always exceptions. So in our study, we found it here and we did the cut at 30 years and younger or older. And if we do see an early visible repigmentation in the scar versus late, that means eight versus 26 months, then we can also differentiate between a recurrent nevus and a recurrent melanoma. That means if we have an old patient, for example, 50 years or older, with a late repigmentation and we get a phone call from a, for example, family doctor, then we can say without checking the lesion, oh, it's more likelihood a recurrent melanoma than a recurrent nevus. And, well, we do a podcast about dermoscopy. The importance of dermoscopy is very high. So we check about lines, circle, any symmetry or asymmetry, centrifugal or carotid light growth or continuous or non-continuous growth. And very important, the pigmentation is this inside or beyond the scar. Let us check to differentiate between a recurrent nevus and a melanoma. Let's start with the nevus. So if we do see radial lines and more and less symmetry and centrifugal growth, we know it is more likelihood a recurrent nevus. Let us show you um, some examples. So here are some radial lines in a recurrent nevus. So coming just from the center and come out and symmetry in a recurrent nevus more and less and centrifugal growth in a recurrent nevus. What do you see here is that um, we have a patient on the right hand side of the image you see it. He was um, 30 years old. It was a nevus in the former histopathology report. We do not know the history of um, a recurrent pigmentation and in the final histopathology report it was a recurrent nevus. Let us move to the recurrent melanomas which are the uh, dermoscopic features here. There are the circles in the circles at the face, the eccentric hyperpigmentation, the chaotic light growth, non-continuous growth, and more, the most important um, feature here was the pigmentation beyond the scar. So examples here from the circles of a recurrent melanoma 
in a 70 years old female with a formal antigo maligna and 49 months later the repigmentation occurred again. So it was a recurrence of the lentigo maligna melanoma. Or eccentric hyperpigmentation. You see here on the left hand side the distinct hyperpigmentation and the former report of histopathology was a melanoma and 42 months later the pigmentation occurred again. Or chaotic light growth and 120 months later, that means 10 years later, the pigmentation, repigmentation occurred again. So this one we need to consider that the pigmentation comes in a recurrent melanoma very late. A non-continuous growth, you can see it here like the pattern, and pigmentation beyond the scar has the highest significance in our study. So the first clue to differentiate between a recurrent nevus and a recurrent melanoma is the age of the patient. Remember, younger patients, more likelihood a recurrent nevus, older patient, more likelihood a recurrent melanoma. And the time of the recurrent pigmentation is if, if it's come very early, very quick, it's more likelihood a nevus than a melanoma. And the second clue is, of course, the dermoscopy features, dermoscopical features for the recurrent nevus and recurrent melanoma, which are listed here. So, our conclusion is um, how to differentiate between the both. And therefore, we um, list here the helpful conclusion for our daily work is if we do have on any first histopathology report and in this it is, has been mentioned that it was either a severe melanocytic dysplasia or a melanoma then perform the complete excision and send to histopathology. If we do not have any histopathology report, for example, this has been done uh, from somebody else, um, a laser excision or something like this. You do not know the report and you do have the criteria of a recurrent nevus in history and thermoscopy. Then do the follow up in the next two to three months. And if it's fine, then you can leave it. And in addition, you can also, if you have the confocal laser microscopy, which is helpful here as well. Our result has been published in JAMA of Dermatology in 2014, and I have presented you here um, the conclusions. I hope that um, it was um, helpful for you and it will be helpful for you in future. And I hope um, that you are quite successful using dermoscopy and also you have fun. Thank you very much.